Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. This is going to be a little in-between video for our multiplayer tutorial series in Unity. For this video, I thought we'd take a few minutes to talk about some of the concepts and terminology behind the architecture of a multiplayer game. So let's get to it. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Now I've put together these slides to help us illustrate the basic architecture of a multiplayer game. And this first slide depicts a multiplayer game with a dedicated server. And so in this example, you have a dedicated device, whether that is a home computer or a third party web service that is constantly running an instance of your game. And this instance of the game is then hosting all the other connections made by other players. Now, a few notes that I would make is that if you're using a networking service such as the Photon plugin or Unity's built-in networking service, I would put those as being the medium by which connections are made and by which data is transferred between clients. So visually, you could say that those services are the orange lines that we have within our slides. Another note that I would make about this particular architecture is that the ability of your networking is greatly dependent on your dedicated device or your server. This can be a good thing because it means that you can personally control the behavior of your dedicated device and your host game. However, this can also be seen as a negative thing because it requires you to maintain a live server at all times, which means that if you ever have to do maintenance or your servers go down, then your game is no longer available for other players. It also means that you can incur additional costs having to keep a live server, and this is in addition to the money that you're already going to be paying to either Unity or Photon for their services. This type of architecture would be mandatory for large-scale games such as MMORPGs. The second type of architecture that we're going to talk about can be depicted by this slide here. In this slide, we replace the need for a dedicated device with another player's device. In this example, we have a player that starts a game and they become the host of that game. And then all other players connect to that game as clients. A note that I'd like to make about this type of architecture is that you're no longer required to maintain a dedicated device, which can end up saving you some time and money. A few downsides to this architecture is that this architecture is more vulnerable to host hacking. Because the host is also a player and the host game is being run on their own individual device, it means that they have a lot more access to host controlled behaviors. Another downside to this type of architecture is that it requires you to set up host migration. Without host migration, if the host game were to end, it would also end for all the other clients. And so a host migration is a method used to select the next player in line to become the host once the host has lost his connection. The last downside that I'll mention about this type of architecture is that because the host game is being run on a player's own device, it means that there's going to be less consistency in gameplay and also network connection. If the player running the host game has an old device or a poor internet connection, this can overall affect the multiplayer gameplay. Now this brings us to where I'd like to talk about more on how a multiplayer game works. With regards to the Unity networking service and the Photon plugin, once you establish a connection between the host and the clients, there's going to be some components and scripts which will help you better synchronize your game across the network. In Unity, these components are such as the network identity component and the network transform component. And there's more than just these that help you synchronize your game across the network. In the Photon plugin, they use what's called a Photon view to synchronize things such as game objects, transforms, and variables. Now, probably one of the most important things when it comes to how a multiplayer game works and how to synchronize a game across the network is what's called an RPC function or a remote procedure call. These are functions that you call on one device and then it will actually send a message across the network to all the other clients, which will then run that same function. Now I'm going to show you how these work using the Unity networking service. And then I'm going to show you how they work using the Photon plugin. And by the end of this, you'll see why I prefer the Photon plugin over Unity's networking service. 
Now with the Unity Network Service, there's essentially two different types of RPC functions. One is a CMD or a command function, and the other is an RPC. A CMD is sent from the client to the host, and an RPC is sent from the host to the clients. So if you're wanting to send a message from one of your clients to all the other players connected to your game, the path would look something like this. First, you would have your client call the CMD function, which would then send a message to the host. Once the host receives this CMD message, it would then run that function, which within that function, you would then have to call an RPC function, which would then send the message out to all the other clients. Within the Photon plugin, there's actually no CMD function. Instead, their RPC function works slightly different. With the Photon plugin, you can call an RPC function on any device connected to your game. And then you can specify who you want this message to be sent to. You can say that you want it to only be sent to the master client or the host, or you can tell it to send it to all other players, or you can tell it to send it to all players, including yourself. So if you wanted to send a message from one client to all the other players connected to your game, the path would look something like this. And so by calling one single RPC function, you can then broadcast that message to all the other players, and you don't have to worry about first sending it from one client to the host, and then from the host to all the other clients. As you can tell, this is a much more intuitive way for a multiplayer game to work. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer the Photon plugin over the Unity networking service. Now this has been a very basic breakdown of the architecture for multiplayer games and how they work. In reality, there's a lot more detail that goes into a multiplayer game, but this covers the gist of it. In our next lesson, we'll be showing you how to create a room controller script, which will handle some of the interactions between players that are connected to the same room. It'll also load players into the multiplayer scene. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.